Okay, so there was a question uh, that came in recently about um, how to evacuate, if, if it's possible to evacuate from, you know, trains or airplanes, things like that. So um, this was a diagram of an airplane uh, drawing that was sent to me. Um, so I took that drawing. This is a simple example. Uh, this is just a seating diagram um, of the airplane, but it's uh, relatively close to real real scale when it's scaled appropriately. So, um, and the situation here is we have 29 passengers um, in the seating arrangement who are evacuating down the aisle and out this front left door. So, um, so one of the you know it's fairly easy to set up. You you make a floor space and then cut out um, parts of the seats where. Um, you know, people can move into the aisle through. You can vary the width of this to make this more or less, uh, sort of more or less freedom of movement in this space. But um, even more importantly, you want to make sure that the distance between the seats um, across the aisle is accurate to the model. Um, and uh, as this is a fairly significant influence over, over movement speed in these situations. Um, uh, then, then I assigned a population here. Um, I did uh, sort of a random 50-50 um, assignment of uh, and distribution of men and um, women in the group. So we got that. Now these profiles I actually set the same. And this was just to show an example as you can have multiple profiles for different uh, occupant characteristics. You can select sets of uh, sets of models, 3D models, to represent the different actors here um, between uh, men and women models. Um, I also included some of the over 60 models uh, or over 55 models here so that you get kind of a distribution of occupants um, in the visualization. But um, in these two cases, the only difference between um, the men and the women groups are I put a priority level one on the women uh, which gives them some preference when uh, in a conflict, movement conflict situation uh, with the men occupants, they would get priority and would move past. Uh, but you can change this however you want. Um, but in terms of walking speed and shoulder width, um, I set these to be the same between the two. Um, and this is a number that you can change. You can even have a distribution of speeds. So I did a small amount of uh, just a quick literature review, um, not even a, I wouldn't even call it a literature review. Essentially, a couple of Google searches, just trying to find um, some references to movement on aircraft. And uh, I found this article here um, from Duke uh, back in 2007. But essentially, they were looking at boarding times, um, and they developed an algorithm for sort of to try to optimize the boarding process and speed that up. Um, they have some recommendations, but down here around page 18, they took a look at walking. They, they give some variable estimates here. So they looked at walking speed at 1.4 meters per second. Um, that says this varies based on age and the distribution of passengers. And they, they gave some reasoning here why they use this 1.4 average. Um, and they referenced the average comfortable walking speed based on age and gender from reference eight. So um, saying that passenger demographics, aisle width, ceiling height, number and size of bags per person affects this walking speed value. So that's something to consider. Um, and I followed the reference to reference eight, and it's this Oxford Journal, uh, comfortable and maximum walking speed of adults age 20 to 79 years, uh, an older 1997 article. Um, but from the results, they said the mean comfortable gait ranged from 1.27 for women in their 70s to 1.46 for men in their 40s. The mean maximum gate speed ranged from 1.74, or let's say 174.9 centimeters per second for women in their 70s to 253 meters per second for men in their 20s. Um, both gate speed measures were reliable with good coefficients, correlated significantly. So you've got some information here. Now this is free walking speed. Um, so we would assume that it would be even if even if uh, you know, this is this is the free walking average speed or comfortable speed. Um, 
we could probably reduce this to some extent. So um, I put a one meter per second speed in here. You can set this as a uniform normal distribution, etc., cetera, um, for each group. Uh, so this would be a, a fairly critical number. Um, and then shoulder width, in most cases, this is uh, free walking environments where there's no sort of foot restrictions or width restrictions. But in this case, um, the aisle width is a fairly significant movement uh, restriction. So you want to make sure that you set your shoulder width to something less than the aisle width and also less than the width of the, um, the rows, um, um, but big enough that you still get some conflict of movement here. Um, one thing you might do is also do a distribution here for our minimum maximum values across the groups so that you get some variation in the collection of occupants. So uh, this is a significant one here. Now I'm looking at Pathfinder 2013 here. You may not see some of these tabs if you're using an older version, but in the upcoming 2013 version, we have some new variables here. Uh, movement and door choice aren't really significant here as they, there is only one door and we're not using escalators or one-way doors or stairs. So, uh, but in the advanced tab, we have a few parameters that you may want to look at. Uh, one is the acceleration time um, from going from a stopped state to uh, full speed, how long it takes an agent. And in free walking environment, that can be higher, but in a limited movement environment, this could, I mean, could be lower, 1.1 seconds or, or less from somebody to go from stop, stopped or standing to full speed. Um, but in this kind of an environment, this, this number should be bigger or maybe bigger. So you might want to look at distributions or setting these numbers higher. Um, the reduction factor, this is people s slightly shrinking their body width or their shoulder width to move past one another. Um, you see in these sort of tight spaces, people go sideways and reduce their body, their shoulder width significantly as they're moving past one another. Um, but 70% is probably a reasonable starting point. Uh, you can mess with that number. Uh, comfort distance is the distance between people, uh, the distance that people try to maintain between each other while they're moving in these environments. Um, this is the default value. You may want to make this uh, larger or smaller, um, depending. It may actually be uh, sort of larger in this case if people are carrying baggage or moving, you know, other items that, that may be trailing behind them or in front of them or whatever, um, if that's part of the evacuation. Um, you could also make this smaller if you want to see, you know, people get a little bit closer together and can move uh, in a tighter grouping. You, know, you can you can mess with that. Um, and then the other ones we'll, we'll sort of leave alone um, and you can look at these values. But these are a few variables that will affect the, the results. Um, so we'll say okay to that. Now another significant variable is going to be in the behaviors um, if there's any kind of an initial delay. If, if people spend any time not moving from time zero, from the start of the evacuation. Um, the default is zero seconds, but you may want to do uh, a uniform distribution or a normal distribution of delays. We'll do a uniform and say people go from three seconds to 10 second delay. Um, so it may take them just a few seconds to stand up, move, get moving, get whatever, collect their items, however you want to account for that. Um, and then get and then get going. Um, this is going to change how people can get out of their rows. So if this person delays a little bit, this person's even though they're ready to go, they won't be able to move past this person. So this is going to delay this other individual's overall movement time. And if there was no delay, this one would move and this one would move, and everybody would file into the row at the same time. Um, and so you may want to account for that, and that will add some time to the overall situation and how people uh, move into the rows and how much jamming or collections are if, if anything occurs in the aisle. So we'll run this quickly. This takes a second in Pathfinder, so that's done. Um, and then we'll take a look at the results. So here's our aircraft. Um, we can see all of our different occupants in here. There they are. Now we'll spin it around so we're looking at the exit. Now um, in Pathfinder 2013 a nice new feature is that we can also um, view not just the imported geometry or just the navigation mesh, um, but we can look at the nav mesh over the imported geometry. So we can see our seats, we can see our door, our walking surface, and all of the occupants in here. Um, so we'll run this now. And you can see now there's a slight delay. Some people will start moving before others. So there we go. Other people are gathering their goods. Some people are ready to go. We get some aisle jamming. And people are moving past each other. Deferring. Here you see some deferment. Um, so here we go. A guy 
guys now are coming out. Okay. Now you may want to change that. That's the effect of that priority setting. Um, you may want to modify that if you don't want to account for people just letting everyone buy. Um, you know, you get different attitudes in different cultures depending on the environment. So um, here we have a 43.5 second um, exit time for that. So um, these are a few variables that you'll want to look at and modify um, in your simulations to see the variation in results based on some of these influencing factors that you have. So if you have any questions or comments, please email me at support at thunderheadeng.com. Thanks.